Steve Evans, welcome to Seamish Football Club. First of all, how are you and how's your first week been at the club? Well, I'm very well. It's been, uh, it's been an interesting week when you consider the, the COVID situation. I think it was well documented that with my time at Gillingham we possibly had the worst in the whole of the EFL, but I thought it was a bit of a wind-up last Thursday morning, my first day here at the training ground and the medical team come and tell me we've got seven, six, seven, eight testing positive on COVID and they've gone home so that was, that, was, that was an issue and then we still think Friday morning is a chance we can travel to Mansfield which we're keen to do but the numbers just went against us we'd have been we'd have been there with eight so it, it couldn't work so so that, that's been a bit interesting we freshened it up over the weekend but the boys are back in there's still a couple of lads that are still missing with COVID but largely we've got most of that group back so two to come in How much has that disruption affected your preparations for uh, this Saturday? and those players coming back and your first week in the job? Yeah, listen, they're important, they're important players for, for me. They were important players for Paul Tisdale. They would have been important players for any manager that, that sat in the chair. Um, but there's no point in us talking about who we've not got on Saturday, and they won't hear that post-match. We'll talk about just what we've what we've got available and how they've done. The boys have worked really well this week. We'll continue to work double today and see where that goes. And then we'll, we'll travel nice and early to the, the southwest tomorrow. And, we're training at a really good facility and, and hopefully then we're ready. But we're, we're travelling to take on a really good side, second at the table. I watched them at Oldham last week. Uh, I watched them once before, just as I watched a number of games. Good manager. I, I, I love Matt as a, as a coach and his ethos. He's got outstanding players, hence why they're, they're second in the table. So it's, it's a real tough gig for us, but we, we'll go there. We'll work incredibly hard over shaping a system that we'll work to. And we'll try our best, and that's all we can assure people. And I'm sure over the past week, so those players who are recovering or the players who stayed fit are really raring to go. With they've had two weeks off and extra away, they they can't wait to get stuck into these final yeah, listen, nine games. Now. Yeah, listen, I, I think a good man lost his job here, don't he, Paul? Does though? He's a, he's a friend of mine. He's he's one of the guys in football we'd message each other regularly. So a good man's lost his job, and I said to players, it's no fault with them because I watched I watched Steve News recently, and the, the players were given everything. So it's, that's not the case. It just didn't work out. And um, so from that point of view, we're, we're not going to be speaking about prior. We're going to speak about going forward now. We've got nine games left, five away from home, which is really tough, particularly with Exeter. And I'm not disrespectful to any club, but when you've got Exeter and Mansfield to go to, who are absolutely in super form, both of them. That makes it really tough. But hey, listen, we, we wouldn't have come in and, and taken the, the role when the chairman offered it to us if we, if we didn't think we could make an impact and, and keep the club in the EFL. That's, that's the only thing that we're keen on and interested in it's been in time next season and thereafter will take care of itself Just in terms of taking the job you mentioned the conversations with the, the chairman what is it about Stevenage that made you feel this was the right fit for you and can you give us a little bit insight what those conversations were yeah, like? You know from a distance I, I let the chairman made an approach for me in my time at Gillingham and I was keen to speak to him I've known I've known the chairman I listen I don't, I don't speak to him I nod to him he's a chairman and I've an opponent normally but um, the chairman made an approach and I was keen to speak to him but the chairman of Gillingham said it, they couldn't reach an agreement, so it didn't happen. And then um, I had no contact, but I, I watched a couple of games. Um, and then I was I was surprised on last Wednesday, lunchtime, 12, 1 o'clock, um, I got a message from uh, the chairman asking if I'd, I'd like to meet him. And um, I knew then that there must be a, an interest in his behalf of bringing me in. I think he'd met someone else, but he met me too. And then on Wednesday evening, he, he rang and we, we got together and, and, and I joined. It's... Um, what well, about the club? I think it's a, I think it's a really good club. The training facilities are a championship standard. They're outstanding, and no one else can. I thought that when we come and played a couple of closed door games prior to that. When you come in, it's even more impressive when you see all of it. So we have no excuses in terms of preparation and and getting ready for games. And I, and I, I think it's a it's a club that a bit like when I went into uh, probably my time at Mansfield and to Rotherham, where it's clubs that were, were struggling a little bit for form and results. And you have to just work damn hard and diligently to turn it round. Now, I'm not here to tell Steve and his fans that I'm going to be any great manager for them. But what I'm going to do is, is try my best to to win some games from, and that passion that I display will not change. But it'll be in the it'll be with my new girlfriend, which is Steve Lynch. What can supporters expect to see from a Steve Evans Steve Lynch side? Well, I'd like to think I'm I'm got to work with the boys first hand uh, yet in terms of the games. But I think they're already well aware what what, what our teams are known for. Um, we play with high energy, we play with passion, we play with commitment. But that's all good and well. If you've not got a good player to win your game or score your goal or head one off the line or make a save, 
and then you, ultimately you're not going to win games. And I think I've, I've gone back and I've probably watched 15, 16 games now in the short time I've been here at different times and skipping through some parts of games, but it's been very fine margins. And in that respect, Paul's been very unlucky. It's been very fine margins when they've been dominating games and someone's had a deflection that goes in against them or someone's put one in the top corner. So there's no doubt in the quality of player we've got here, but can we get them in a system? Can we get them in a shape? Can we get them in a disciplined uh, fashion? That, that says we can go forward and win matches. It's highly identifiable. If you can see too many goals and don't score enough, you're not going to win games. It doesn't matter what level you're at. So we've got a lot to to work on, but the boys have been brilliantly receptive. From last Friday, we went on the grass for the first time because last Thursday we had to clear the club out completely on the chairman's instruction. And then when we come in Monday, the, the boys have been in double and, and every day they've, they've worked that little bit harder, that little bit smarter. And I think that maybe the they're just trying to, as best they can, to buy in some of the ideas that, that we like as a management team. And just finally, you said before, nine games to go, but four of those games are at home. How important is it that supporters really rally around this team, around their town, and get behind us for, towards the end of the season? I, I think it's massive. You know, I've, I think I could direct anyone to look at uh, a media release only done last night, I think, by the um, a man I know really well, the Scunthorpe United chairman. Peter Swan and he's and he's talked about the reality of going down to to the National League and how tough that makes it considering the teams that's in there. We're all watching the National League now and watching some giants. Is there any bigger than Notts County, the oldest football league club going? Swansea, I could keep going, Grimsby. It's really tough. So the town has to rally. If a, a football league club is is massive in the community, it's massive to the finances of Lots of shops, lots of petrol stations, lots of cafes, lots of trains, lots, lots of everything. It just it provides so much into the community, and we have to do our level best. You know, we. I, I don't care if if we get the points away. I prefer to get them at home because that's where your real pain supporters are behind you. But we just we just want to be in the EFL, and so we've got great ambitions and just been in it. We want to be in it, and then we can um, we can go to work properly and build what what we'd like to build and what our chairman what our chairman wants because let me put on the record here early doors I was surprised at how decent the budget was that's unusual for me saying that I was surprised not the best but I was surprised and Mr Wallace um, uh, chairman to me um, has done is doing more than, than I thought from a distance so there is no excuse for that same next season we'll be in the top group but we have to earn the right to be in that EFL League 2 next season